Welcome back to Bleach Anime Review. This is part 6. And in this part I'm reviewing just season 13 because I'm currently working on season 14. So I figured I want to review a season that I've already finished. This The subtitle arc for the, ser the season is Zanpak Toe Tale, Zanpa uh, Zanpak Toe and Ultimate Story, Ultimate Tale. Now there is references. Now this just happened to come up between seasons uh, 12, what is it, 12? Yeah, 12 and 14. It has nothing to do with the wrong car arc at all. Yeah, this has nothing to do with the wrong car arc. As a matter of fact, the wrong cars aren't even referenced at all. This is another random uh, filler season. This is the second time this has happened during the whole wrong car stuff. Where this random season comes completely out of nowhere. And it just it, 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 it's a good story, nonetheless. It's a little bit better than the, uh, see, see, the story they gave for uh, season... Um, Season 9. Yeah, it's a much better story. Um, because it's interesting idea. The Zanpak Toes, the swords the soul reviews, turn against them. I'm like, huh, that's actually not a bad concept. And you get a chance to see some of these some of these swords uh, manifest in forms. Like, Zoe Mara was simply a, uh, a big hairy woman with, with a, uh, a, a little boy dressed in a snake costume. And that's Zoe Mara. Um, Byakuga's sword is simply a guy in a 19th century samurai suit. Um, Rukia is a woman basically dressed in a geisha with pale white skin. Uh, Riginku, that, that, that's her name, Riginku. Yeah, hers is a red-haired woman in a cat suit. Not kidding. Momo, who barely featured on the show, the only reason why I think they threw her in because she was featured in the previous season, so why not? Hers is simply just a geisha with bells. Yep, that's her geisha. That is simply her form. Of course, people who watch the show basically know what Ichigo's uh, Zanpato manifest manifesto form is simply, well, it's been seen since the start of the show, so it's not something new. Uh, let me think. Um, I'm trying to think, what other ones? Basically, they they show the oh the uh, lieutenant of squad one. His is simply uh, a guy who's never seen using his sword at all in the whole series, and his manifestation his manifest sword form is a guy who shoots lightning out of a pole with a box on his back. That's his manifest sword form. Yamaka is simply a guy who looks exactly like him. Which I think is the same voice actor, with who basically has peacock feathers as wings, and wears a turban on his head. I'm like, okay, yeah, and he knew he knew that this was his Zanpak toe, simply because he because his because his uh because he because he is disgusted by his look. Yeah, um, uh, Ikaku is simply this big hulking I don't know kind of wolf monkey thing. Which the only way they identify it's really him is because he did the lucky dance, something that Ichigo that Ikaku did. He showed Ichigo the first time they fought. They even show um that that medic from uh Squad Four. They show his Zanpak toe. Simply put, uh, his is a robot, a tiny little robot, and they show him one episode after the whole story is over. Trying to think, though, was there any other ones? Oh yeah, and oh, Heineko is this like very quiet warrior with a big white X on his face, on his like forehead. Hiromaru, and basically he was the first one of the captains up on Tosu Taka running. And they even show what uh, the captain squad eats. He has two of them. One is a a beautiful woman with an eye patch. The other one is looks like a teenage girl who looks like she's. Who doesn't speak and shows off one of her eyes. I don't know why. I get the reason why that it show up, that she has two. Because he has two on my toes. So, nothing usual there. And uh, Joshiro, the captain of Squad 13. His manifested sword form is two children. Yep. Two children. No joke, that's simply... He's like, hey, you're... you're Sasamara, I think that's how you pronounce the sword's name. He says, how did you, you guess right? 
<laughs> I'm like, okay, instead of attacking them, he just plays games with them, which I think is just so hilarious when they finally show them. I'm trying to think, though. Um, Yamato is simply just a fire thing. Yeah. I'm trying to think there was any other one. Uh, can't think of any. Oh, uh, the guy with the 69 tattoo in his face? Yeah, his is very creepy. And he doesn't get along with him at all. Matter of fact, even after the whole main story is finished, he still tries to kill him. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to think, though. Was there anybody else? Oh, yeah, uh, Lieutenant of Squad 3. His is simply a guy who, well, carries this big ball and train on his shoulder, has this big piece of wood on his back, and that's just his personality. Oh, they even show, they even show uh, the captain of Squad 2 and Lieutenant Squad 2, Zampak Tos. The one for the lieutenant is just like him. As a matter of fact, it looks exactly like him. Went up the Soul Reaper robot, basically just wearing pants. Yeah. And Soy Fangs is simply a fairy with the little stinger finger thing. Which I'm like, okay. A stinger finger. How really bizarre. <laughs> yeah, it is bizarre. I'm trying to think there was any other one. Let me think. Uh, hmm. Can't think of any. Oh yeah, the main bad guy, he's a Zanpak Toe as well. Apparently he was a Zanpak Toe of a, of a soldier who was imprisoned uh, several hundred years ago. That's according to the story. Who apparently was uh, Byakuga's grandfather's son-in-law. Which kind of makes him related to Byakuga. I don't think the woman he married was Byakuga's mother. My personal guess, it was probably his uh, one of his aunts. That's my personal guess. I don't know. They never really, really properly explained here in the show. All I know is that he's actually not related to the Kushiki clan by blood. He's just related by marriage. Yep. I mean, it was nice to see Byakuya's grandfather again in the flashbacks because this is the second time I've seen him in the flashback stuff because the only time I've seen flashbacks was um, for that season, the past for season 11. But it was nice to see him again. Um, of course, Byaka got a chance to fight him. There was a brief moment where he turned against the Reapers just because he wanted to stop uh, Koga from emerging, which basically his whole point was not to steal him again, but just to kill him, which he does succeed doing that. The Manifest of Zabak Toe. I thought he was a very cunning villain. I thought it was odd, though, he had very long fingernails. I thought that was really, really bizarre, to say the least. Yeah. And he uses his voice to manipulate, and his, basically his ability is to manipulate Zampak until he's turned against our masters. Okay. Even after he's defeated, there's still, like, a mess to clamp afterwards. So I praise the fact they actually had the last 10 episodes of Season 13 just deal with the aftermath. Not a bad idea. I mean, you can't just go back to doing a wrong car stuff, basically, like, just, oh, it's over? Okay. But the place needs to be rebuilt. So it's referenced the fact the place is being rebuilt. So it's not bad. And it's, there's these fun little various stories of what the Manifest of Zabak Toe are up to, basically. They take on these other Manifest of Zabak Toe, which, without the Masters, they're identified as Sword Beast. Oh, and um, the Captain Squad 12, basically, he's where he freed all, all the sword from the brainwashing. Yep, he did. Oh, and Kapashi shows up with a different voice, up, with a different voice actor. I gotta say... I kind of miss David Lodge. David Lodge is more interesting than this guy is. This guy just seems like... Doesn't have much personality to him. As you know, he just... Like when he first shows up, when you see Kapashi, he just takes off his eye patch, like, not long after he just defeated Wimbusky. I think that's what I say. And he just lets out a bunch of spirit energy for no reason. And I'm like, really? Really? Is there a reason for this? Nope. I guess not. It's a really bizarre idea to do to show off the have the captain do that, and the fact he's, he's he fights Byakuya a couple of times, which is nice. Though they reference in season fourteen the person they were fought, which kind of makes the the whole Zabakto season not canon. 
But it's still an interesting season nonetheless. Unlike, let's say, with the Captain one. That one, I kind of felt as though you could have... Well, in the case of the Zonpak Dill story, the only way you can place this one, my personal guess, is... I don't know if it was just after the wrong car stuff, because everybody simply has the same power set as they do in the current wrong car stuff. So... I honestly don't have any idea whether it plays this season. So I'd say this season is probably just a cannon. That's my personal guess what they do with it. Yeah. So it's still a very good season nonetheless. Um I'm trying to think though. Um oh yeah. There's even uh, an episode with Heineko and Rigoku uh, decided to go back. Rigenku decided to go to the, to the world of living and just go shopping with Orihime. I thought that was kind of fun. Yeah, and even Zaymaru goes to the real world while the or monkey stays with Renji. Snake just goes off, does whatever the heck he wants, runs to Ichigo's sister, uh, spends some time with her. Of course, he looks about the same age. And here's the strange thing, though. Uh, he's only referred to as Snake. He doesn't give a proper name. Okay. Fine. And the way they drop the sword beast, uh, when the soul arc starts, basically, have a party! <laughs> and, uh, Toshiro is like, why are we having a party for? The drop the sword beast. <laughs> I thought it was just so, uh, like... Okay, it's like they had to come with a, uh, an idea that there's nothing involved destruction to draw them out. Okay, so they try blowing areas up. Nope, can't do that. Burning down the place down. Nope, can't do that. And then it's like, okay, I got an idea. Let's throw a party <laughs> for no reason. Let's just have the, the, the squads of 10 and 13 have a random party for no reason. Yeah, a party where everybody's drinking. Even the Zonpunk toes are drinking. It's just so hilarious. And plus, also, uh, there's this one scene where, um, where Regeki is basically just lying on the couch, and he asks, she asks, um, Hiri Maro to make her some tea, and she's, he says, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and, um, and I thought this one was really hilarious. That she was like, I don't remember you, uh, I don't remember making, asking my Zonpunk toe to be your servant. <laughs> It is just so hilarious, the fact that stuff like this, the fact that all the seriousness that they, they went through with the whole Manifest Zonpunk Tail stuff, it's nice to have some hilarious episodes now and again. So, really good season nonetheless. Uh, does it affect the, the upcoming, does it affect anything to show? No. It's just a season simply just on the side. Uh, it does reference stuff basically happened previously. Um, it does not say that the wrong car stuff happened, per se. But, as where you can place this season, I have my at least, season, at least in the case season of the past, that one you can definitely say that season is canon because it's referenced then later on. Um, the bounce kind of the same thing with that one as well. You can say that one's canon as well, but seasons 9 and 13, I have no idea where you place these seasons at all. The only theory I can have is simply, like, maybe before the final arc. That's my personal theory. Who knows? But, yeah. Good season. But, uh, you can watch it at your leisure. Alright? So, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for part 7. I'll talk about the longest season of the series, season 14, which I'm currently working on right now. Okay? Until then, I will see you there. Bye.